Microsoft comes up with new restrictions every year with new functions that many, many users don't like. For example, the recent recall feature. With this, Windows constantly records your screen and saves it so that you can later extract information from it that may be able to help you. This feature called Recall was introduced at the beginning of this year but has met considerable resistance. And after a brief back and forth, it now really seems to be the case that Recall is included with Windows 11 and you can't really remove it. In addition, more and more computers were found on which the recall feature was activated directly. Such functions exist again and again. That's why you should consider switching to Linux. And these are the five key features why you should use Linux today. And with this, welcome to Linux Art. My name is Jean and I'm using Linux for several years and have been running YouTube channels around Linux for almost 10 years. And one thing I can tell you, there hasn't been a moment in the past where more people are considering switching from Windows to Linux since these days. So if you haven't switched to Linux yet, let's just clarify that now. Once and for all, what does Linux actually stand for? Who is it suitable for? Who is it not suitable for? So I would say, let's start. The first point, and in my view, almost the most important point is the freedom of Linux. Linux can usually be downloaded free of charge. You can pass it on, you can customize it to your own wishes. And if there are any features that you don't need, that you don't like, you can deactivate them. You can switch them off or you can even uninstall them. For me as a Linux user, it is unimaginable to have an application or a function which I can't get out of a system because we under Linux design our systems ourselves and do not let big players dictate anything to us, which software we have to use, which default browser should be used, or if we really want to play Candy Crush on our computer. <laughs> of course, there are also good and kind of bad Linux distributions, but here we have the freedom to use the system. We want to the interface we want to and to really customize the system exactly to our wishes. And we don't even pay attention to that, that Linux systems usually run faster and also are staying fast over the time. But that's another point again, I would say, let's move to the second point. And this point has been heard more often. It is implicitly included in freedom and that is the point of open source. Yes, this buzzword may have already been heard by all of you, but what does it actually mean? In the end, open source means that you can publicly view the source code with which a program, a software, or in our case Linux, is written and compiled off. You can see everything publicly and understand exactly how the software works underneath. And that creates maximum transparency and trust for us so that we know to which points and clients our data goes. And of course, much more importantly, that we can verify that with the vast majority of Linux distributions, no data is collected, no files are used for AI training processes or other things. But open source is only one part of the story. The bigger word, which is actually the more important word, but which is not so common, is the point of free software. Because free software includes this open source principle. It also says that you can use the system exactly as you want, that you can change it. And you can also share the software. Only under one condition, its license says, you are free to share this software with anyone but with the same rights to use, to edit and also to share it on, on the same conditions. So such software like Linux will always remain free. No big company can come and steal the whole thing and say, yes, this is ours now. No, this can't really happen. Linux and all this free software behind it is free to the general public and everyone can participate in it. And even if you want, you can also create your own Linux. 
And yeah, anyone who has ever dealt with the topic of Linux also knows that there are many, many different Linux distributions, so to say different types of Linux, because everyone can do everything and everyone can share everything. So we have more than thousand Linux distributions that can be very overwhelming, but I can really recommend to every one of you to start with Linux Mint. It's a very successful Linux distribution based on Ubuntu. And I'm also using it since many years with more knowledge about Linux, but I stick to Linux Mint. But for this, I created another video why I'm staying on Linux Mint on many computers. I will put you the link into the video description. So yeah, this point of free software and the freedom to use this software how we wanted to use is the point why Linux is so successful as it is today. And if you think now, yeah, but not many people are using Linux right now, I would say, yeah, you are wrong. Because Linux is a bit smaller in the desktop world. Yeah, that's fine. But actually for the entire other IT world, Linux is a very dominant element in almost all areas. For example, for the server infrastructure, IoT devices, printers, or even spaceships and rovers on the Mars. Yeah, Linux is used everywhere because anyone can use it and adapt it freely. And also I would say, yeah, the code of Linux is written damn good and just runs how you would intend it. Also, the majority of all mobile phones is also running on Linux. Yeah, Android is based on the Linux kernel too. So yeah, I would say let's come to the third point why you should consider switching to Linux and that's data protection. Yeah, we actually already dealt with it earlier. Linux or Linux Mint, so to say, does not send any data. We can check it ourselves. The systems usually don't call home either. There's nothing more to say. It just keeps your data where it belongs to and that is your very own computer. Let's come to another point which is a good pro for Linux, and this is security. Linux itself has a very secure base. But some people of you might think, yeah, but due to the open source concept, everyone can see such vulnerabilities because yeah, the code is open to everyone. And so it could be easier to hack into systems. But if one thing has become clear in the past that the secret storage of source code or concepts, especially if we see the beginnings of the internet and the security concepts behind it, that closed security concepts were generally more insecure. So Linux follows the same concept on which our complete web or even cryptocurrencies are following security by obscurity. Because many eyes see more than maybe only two or three thousand eyes that are possibly in a company which are producing the software. Yeah, the code of Linux is viewed and checked daily by several systems and by many hundreds people a day. Also tested, of course. But yeah, people make mistakes and even Linux does have sometimes some security issues. That's quite normal for complex software systems. So it is to the Linux team to fix them very fast and to roll out these updates to us. But many Linux distributions are doing this quite well. And even the big companies like Microsoft, Google, Red Hat, of course. And yeah, I would say almost every company out there, which is bigger, is using Linux in some critical business areas and they are trusting it. So yeah, Linux had some more public security vulnerabilities than for example, Windows or Apple. But the big difference we have here is that every single security vulnerability, even every small security vulnerability in Linux is made public or rather is publicly visible. And in comparison to Microsoft or Apple, many of such processes are happening internally and they don't get out to the public. So you really can't compare the amount of CVs between free software and closed source or propriety software. In addition, it must be said that Linux itself is a very, very large ecosystem. There are many different software libraries and software projects which are repeatedly pointed out by critics. Nevertheless, I would say the whole thing must always be seen in proportion and so you can use sustainable, secure Linux systems, both in the server area, but also in the desktop area. 
And also Linux comes with a very complex security system on different levels. So for example, if you open any PDF file in Linux Mint, these are opened in their own so-called app armor profile. So even if a PDF, for example, is vulnerable, the system will not get affected because yeah, Linux or here Linux Mint has such features right built into it and is securing it sometimes by itself or some components which are deeply integrated in the system but in the other way are also separated that such security threats won't affect our system. In general however it can be said yes with Linux you have even as an end user a certain security boost and I would say let's come to the fifth reason why you should use Linux or rather consider it. And that's the resource conservation. Because it is not a big secret that Linux operating systems usually run much better on older hardware and in view of the discontinuation of Windows 10 updates next year, many computers will become electronic raised as it currently looks. So many of these can still run wonderfully on Linux for many years since Linux is generally leaner and the tasks that an operating system should take on are solved much more efficiently without any bloatware and no more or less in my view offers a platform which with you can use the best operating system we have out there. This means that with Linux you not only conserve our resources but in the end of course also your wallet. And if you now have a few old computers or have computers that would definitely become unusable with the end of Windows 10, I would recommend you just to install Linux and to take a look to it on Linux Ort. There are many helpful videos about the usage of Linux. So if you want to get even more useful tips, just make sure hitting the subscribe button. Just have a look to the videos and I will put you the link to the Linux Mint Crash Course, the operating system I recommend to everyone. I will put the link to it into the video description and also you will see it in the end card. If you have any questions or concerns about switching to Linux, write it me into the comments. I will do a follow up video on this where we are handling all these things. So yeah, what do you have to lose? Just take a look at Linux. It really pays off in the long run. And if you are not using the Adobe suite, for example, or you are not in the creative industry, then I would say Linux can be a really good alternative for you. And okay, yeah, hardcore gamers will also not be really happy with Linux. But for all other people out there, I would recommend just have a look to Linux because yeah, I would say in the end it will be the better operating system for you and even it maybe comes with some hurdles in the long run. The time you will invest in Linux will pay off because you are knowing more things about your computer, you have everything in your own hand and you are not belonging and dependent to any big player. So just give it a shot. What are your causes why you consider switching to Linux or why you are already using Linux? Just write it me into the comments. I'm very curious about it. And if you found this video helpful, please consider liking this video. And if you haven't, subscribe to Linux Aunt to get even more useful videos in the next weeks because every week we are releasing new stuff around Linux and open source. So I would say if you're new to Linux, just give it a shot. You won't regret it in the long run and see you on the next one. Bye.